Okay, so I'm unmuting myself. All right, great. Everyone is here. Okay, so um, the last slide. Okay, I don't think I'm sharing my screen now. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So we're back. Um, the last slide talks about, you know, the roles in a Six Sigma initiative, right? So in Six Sigma, we have different roles. I'll just um, talk about this in like three minutes and then we'll, we'll move to the next phase, right? So in a, uh, but just to be clear, can everyone hear me? Dominic, is everyone hearing me? Yes, clearly I can. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Zoom has its way of um, you know, limiting us to 40 minutes, then we'll continue, but glad we um, you know, get over that and then we continue. So, um, so there are several roles in um, Six Sigma Initiative and uh, we have um, the sponsor and champion. So what the sponsor does, it typically the, spons the sponsor is someone who's um, high up in the organization, right? Um, you know, helps remove roadblocks, you know, the operator supports the green belt and the black belt, right? Sorry, the sponsor, who's like a champion of the project, supports the green belt and black belt. He helps remove barriers. He selects and owns this project, you know, things like execution control. Um, if there are gains that are realized, support that implementation, you know, um, gives out resources, right? Participate in those project um, reviews. He also helps um, select the green belt and the black belt, right? He's the boss of the green, black, you know, that kind of thing, right? Um, we've got the master black belt who, um, you know, oversees a large group of projects certified in black belt with advanced, you know, training, um, serves as the internal experts. In, in that case, it could be someone like a Dominic in an organization. It could be someone like, um, like me, you know, that kind of thing, right? Um, it could be any of us too as well, right? But, you know, you need to have that expertise, right, to, um, you know, lead a group of green belts, a group of black, actually a group of black belts and all in the organization, you know. Uh, the black belts are trained and certified to devote training, um, you know, lead the teams in those projects. The black belt goes for the big belts, big bets project, like things that will yield big money, right? Cost reduction process, improvement in efficiency, different things that would add to the bottom line, just like, um, 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 you know, Martin said, how, how does it, how do we get that result, right? So the black belt helps, you know, get that result that will help in bottom line improvements, uh, that are felt, results that are felt. So we also, um, we have another role, like a project leader, who's usually the black belt as well, can lead those projects, facilitate the team in applying the Six Sigma methodology to solve problems, um, spread these methodologies. Like a, the, the black belt is like an evangelist, you know, you know, preaches this gospel, right, to everyone so that they know that this is how we use the methodology. This is the process that we use, you know. The black belt is called on to assist on other business issues. Um, for you to be a black belt, you have to be um, self-motivated. You've got to have the desire to drive change, um, you know, and, and, and many stuff. So for the green belt as well, green belts are trained to apply these tools to improve processes and products in their current product, in their current um, positions. So the green belt should have, um, of course, the right frame of mind, process and pro product knowledge. Again, basic math fundamentals, um, organizational knowledge, solid communication skills, and also facilitating, um, you know, teams. So um, these are the roles in a Six Sigma initiative. This is not exhaustive, right? Because you could also have some project members and and that kind of thing. But the key roles are stated as above, and um, you know. It, we also have some certification for green belt, some certifications for black belt, master black belt as well. So um, most of these things are available online. There are different um, organizations that um, organize such. There's the Six Sigma Institute. There's, um, 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 you know, there's um, IASSC, um, which is um, a, a generic body, you know, that's individual. There's ASQ, you know, Association, American Society of Quality. Um, there are different, um, and even Villanova. So different companies offer different stuff, but it's all the same methodology. Six Sigma, want to get to, you know, that Six Sigma phase, want to get to perfection. So um, I think that's the 
end of this first session. Uh, Sorry, please. I want to ask about the yellow belt. Where does it fall into in this? Uh, into. Yeah. yeah, thanks for that question. So the, the yellow belt, you know, falls um, a little bit down below the green belt, right? So, um, but yellow belt, it's usually something keen in um, like IT companies, right? Like IT in the IT industry, right? But it's like like the earlier phases, the yellow belt and the white belt, you know, that kind of thing. But they're like preliminary phases, you know, but I think more of the certifications that are very much recognized, especially as it relates to manufacturing, would be, you know, the green belt as a starting point. Yeah, but that that's where it falls. It it still falls in the role, but um, um, not 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 much, uh, you know, recognition is you know given in that regard from a Six Sigma initiative point of view. But the lead projects, smaller projects, so to speak, and they are part of um, you know, uh, people that apply the methodology. Okay, so um, we we'll look at the questions. Uh, what are, what questions do we have? at the moment, Dominic, right? Is it time to answer some of these questions? Yes, we can answer some. Okay, you answered one already, which was from Martins. From Martins. Um, yeah, but there was one before that, and that, um, it was from the um, previous, but I, I was able to take notes. Uh, it was asking if there's any organization in existence now that is operating mm -hmm. at Six Sigma level of operation. Yeah, General Electric at a point reach Six Sigma, right? And um, but again, another thing to see is that Six Sigma is not a, it's a, it's also a mindset, right? It's also a mindset to continuously get better. Because again, you would ask, once we reach Six Sigma, what what next, right? So it's about getting there and sustaining it and ensuring that you know we constantly improve. Like if you take a um, analysis of you know we did Minitab um, a couple of weeks ago and all, and you look right, want to center everything to the mean, want to make sure that everything is a thin and and, um, you know, the spread is not wide and that it's it's a thin and tall man, if you look at the bell curve, right, as opposed to a short and wide, you know, a fat man, so to speak, right? So it's constantly trying to get thinner, it's constantly trying to get to that sweet spot, that perfection. So it's a journey, right? It's 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 not like, oh, we've gotten the Six Sigma, then let's rest on our hours. So it's, it's, it constantly evolves. Some companies get to Six Sigma perfection, then they start going down. Why some, you know, um, get there and they keep sustaining it. So it's not about getting there. It's more about, you know, sustaining that and ensuring that, you know, the customer requirements are satisfied, customer quality is satisfied and that the product is right the first time. So I would say, yeah, there are companies that have gotten there, right? There are companies that are still on that journey, but even the companies who have gotten there are not giving up. They are still going, looking at what's next. What's the big thing? What's next? Okay. So there's another question. It's um, from Osaritin. She's asking, is Six Sigma applicable to a service industry? Very well, of course. Six Sigma is applicable to any industry, right? as far as there are KPIs to be measured, as far as you have customers, for a service industry, for instance, right, um, it, it, they, have, um, they have customers, right? So you need to look at what are those things that are critical to the customers, right? What are those failure rates? What are those bugs? What are those things that, you know, the customer wouldn't want to have more of, right? The things that bug the customer, because the customer is paying for perfection. The customer wants this to be right every time. The customer wants value. Again, the customer wants to, it, 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 so, for instance, let's say you, you go to a customer and say, oh, I'm going to increase the price I render this service just because um, I, have, I, have, um, I need to add two more people to my team and everything. You know, the customer is going to say, no, I don't care, right? I want you to give me this same service, right? I don't care about, you know, you can give me this same service and um, at the same cost. That's what the customer wants, right? Or even at a reduced cost. So um, the customer wants a better service. So we need to go with the customer with, you know, reduced cost, improved efficiency so that we can keep servicing them and keep them, right? And that's what, you know, that's applicable in a service industry. It could be a customer service center where you have um, clients, right? There are KPIs to measure, the number of drop calls, you know, the average time it takes to pick up a ring. So different measures like these, which are the critical to, um, quality requirements, right, can be looked at from a customer perspective to say, this is how my customer would like to be serviced. And then we now have some projects to improve those processes and get, you know, satisfaction out of the customer. So yes, can yes. be applied to any industry. Yeah, for example, um, like um, customer care, the guys who do the call handling, you, yep. want, to, you want to reduce the handling time 
um, the time at which people pick calls and the, the drop calls, you could use Six Sigma for that. So there's as long as you have a customer base, I think you can apply Six Sigma there. And someone else is asking, is, um, is it possible to go for green belt training without being certified for yellow belt? Of course, yeah, green belt, like for us in manufacturing then, green belt was seen as an entry level, um, you know, program. Back then in Cadbury, um, every management trainee was scheduled to go through the green belt training, right? Because again, it was like the basic. We didn't start from white or yellow belt. We started from green belt. It's this, right? With green belt, um, it gives you that edge, analyze the data right because it's in green belts that's where you learn more of you know mini tab application more of um you know cleaning up data pareto you know you, you learn that in yellow belt as well right you get that improvement mindset but you know the green belts kind of lead pro, pro um project. project right and and big project and um learn team facilitation usually self-motivated people with good knowledge of maths you mustn't be a statistic expert but at least you should know some maths right then applying that maths in statistics it's what you know minitab would do so yes i agree um yeah um green belt is is a key is a key phase too and it's it's more industry recognized okay great i think we'll take the rest after the at the end of this session right okay yeah thank you so much so let's keep the questions coming at the end we'll talk about the defined phase but i'll pass the ball now to um dominic to take us through um you know define introduction okay so you need to make me host now right <laughs> oh yes thank you um, Okay, so uh, my job here is just to take us through. Um, is just to take us through the um, the define phase. Um, okay, or through the parts. I would say that I would take you take us through the parts. I think that's what I want to do. Just take us through the parts and um, through what um, the mic pathways are. What are the two kits? Uh, what define phase um, basically is what. So we look at voice of customer, but we look at all of these things in minute details. Uh, we won't be able to um, go into this in, um, in details. Um, so I discussed with Chinedu and it was like, ah, we might not be able to go into all of this with, into details. So that's why it would be um, very important that you go through this at the end of the training. Okay, we'll share slides. So I have the details, we'll share the slides, but um, I think it's for you to do your homework. So what does, um, so when we're talking about Six Sigma, what are the phases and what does it entail that you do? So for defined phase, you are looking at, oh, I want to solve a problem. Um, okay, what problem are you trying to solve? You need to understand. So that's why we agree that yes, you could do it for customers. And um, uh, as long as you have customers and you want to meet business requirements, you yes, you can do Six Sigma. So your first, your defined phase, you are looking at, um, 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 understanding your customers, completing your project charter. Um, Chinedu will still take us through that. That's a very important part. I think that's the that's the part we need to uh, we need to take out of this training. You need to be able to complete a project charter, uh, then develop a robust um, process map. So we'll get to understand what um, CIPOC is. So for measure phase, you, um, in the future, we'll look at what's the extent of the problem. Um, for the analyze phase, you want to understand why is the problem happening. And for improve phase, what is your pro proposal and why? Then how will you solve the problem? How will you keep it fixed in your control phase? Um, so at the end of all of these phases, it's important that you go to, you come back as a team. Um, so uh, you know you have your sponsor, you have the master black belt, and you have um, the green belt. So you have a project team. It's always important that you come at the end of the phase to to discuss at each. So we call it the toll gate, define phase toll gate. You come there, you have a discussion. You go to when you finish measure, you come, you have a discussion. So the define phase has um, like uh, in my mail, you see, I said, oh, we have five phases. We have like 15 steps. There are just three steps in define phase. But there are also some toolkits. So it's important that when you're doing your define phase that you understand what voice of customer is, what affinity diagram is, 
how do you translate needs to requirements? How do you carry out kernel analysis? How do you um, carry out like critical to quality? How do you select projects um, for your step two? That's completing your project charter. You just need to know how to prepare a very good project charter. It's just like preparing a, a, a business case. Um, then the last step for the defined phase is just about um, developing your process map that's end to end, not just for the system that you are looking at, but you need to do end to end so that you can you can tell where your problem really is. Okay, so I will skip the rest of the phases because when we get there, we'll look at it. So for me measure phase has its own um, its own toolkit also, but uh, I think these are the areas where we can we can look at on our own. Same for the analyze phase. Um, it has um, three steps also. Okay, so measure has three steps. Um, analyze has three steps. Um, so you remember when Chinedu was talking about um, um, green belt. So it's you'll be able to use um, Minitab very well or use statistics as the case may be to solve, to do your analysis properly. You need to be able to show the business that this is what I'm trying to solve. This is the problem that I have seen. So all of these tools will help you so that you brainstorm to identify the gaps. You or you do your um, Ishikawa as your fishbone, or you are um, then you want to ascertain what the root causes are. So you use Pareto, your scatter plots, and all of that. And there's some there's one other interesting part um, though we couldn't cover during our mini tap session is when you are validating your root causes. There's this one sample T, two sample T, ANOVA, one variance. But when we get to analyze phase, we would uh, learn how to do each of these. Um, each of these with Minitab, it's, it's interesting. I must confess, like you be able, you get a problem, you get data, and you are able to plot and understand how you can solve it. Then you go to your imp improve phase. Um, three steps also with so many tools um, that you could use to to understand, just to propose how you could um, solve the problem and why. Then you get to your um, control, your control phase. So in your control phase, there are also interesting tools. Most of them from, um, we did, we've done already in our last, in the Minitab session, session. So where you are able to use your control charts, then you understand Gemba very well, that's go to the spot, understand how to use um, visual boards, um, very interesting. Um, so, but when we get there, yes, we'll be able to use all of these tools. So voice of customer, what does it really mean? It's understanding who your customer is. I like the question about service um, because, um, it's when you know your customer, then you're able to define who I have customers that are internal to me, I have customers that are external to me, and I'm able to place them, um, understand how I could satisfy them, or how have they been dissatisfied that I want to solve their problems. So we also have primary customer as the one who is who uses the product or the service, and the secondary customer is the one who pays for this. So that uh, so voice of customer is just about understanding what the need is and what the requirement is. Uh, the need is the want. Oh, I want an iPad. What is the requirement? Oh, I want an iPad that has six gig, seven gig, user friendly. So you, you need to if you don't understand the voice of the customer, you will struggle in def, in, in creating your project charter. You will struggle so so much because you won't be able to define what your problem is. You you won't be able to state um, what your goal would be, um, because when we get to project chatter, when Chinedu is talking about, you understand why you need to know um, the voice of your customer. Your customer wants this at so 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 time. Your customer wants a he wants he wants a, a, an air condition, but he, his requirement for the air condition is that it's one horsepower, 1.5 horsepower. You need to understand this. So when you're solving the problem, you understand what you're trying to, to meet. Okay, so how do you get the voice of customers? We use surveys, we use interviews, we use focus groups, and we use suggestions and observations. Um, these people could be associates, they could be investors, customers, or the process. Um, okay, so we have another tool, which is the affinity diagram. This is a very interesting one, um, because here, to solve this as a green belt or um, you're leading the team as master belt, you need people to come into teams through a brainstorming exercise and bring in all the data that they have um, in re with regards to a problem or an issue. So everybody writes what you just randomly. I, th I did this at one, se one se um, section once and it was amazing. 
just write your thoughts. No right answer, no wrong answer. Everybody comes, puts it on, post it, and we just put all our thoughts together. But, but what, what, what are we trying to get? What we would, at the end of the day, try to understand what all the possible problems could be, then we'll bring them in. So you record the feedbacks on sticky notes, we display them, the sticky notes, we bring those feedbacks together and we create headers for them. If you see what they've done here, so they've been able to create, oh, this is HR challenge, this is training, this is process, this is billing. It helps you because you're in a theme and everybody's thinking differently. But everybody has an idea and everybody's we're all trying to solve that problem so if you are able to scatter what uh, your thoughts are and bring them back in together and then you can now create an, an affinity diagram okay i thought i kept a slide for there but then you can you, you can draw an affinity diagram so understand this also <clears throat> that all of these tools you don't have to use in your six sigma project but depending on what your problem is, then you choose what tool to use. Um, but voice of customer, of course, you need to understand that before you can solve. So you might not choose to use the affinity diagram. You might choose to use the Kano analysis, that's the Kano model. So this, um, this model just looks at your customer as, um, looks at your customer requirements. Oh, your customer says he wants a 1.5 horsepower what and he's feeling dissatisfied because when he got home the, it's showing 1.5 there but it's delivering when you measure your efficiency it was delivering one horsepower or he he ordered for uh, a documentation of six pages and he expected this inside and what you gave him was five pages um, what of information and then he's feeling dissatisfied so now you need to look at what are the things that must be as in what must be um, what are the performance needs and what are the delighters? What are the things that you can just do to make your customer um, happy? So you, you look at all of those things. So kind of analysis just helps you plot it. So it's a good tool because, um, especially for presentation, when you want to present your, 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 your project, uh, like the defined face, you can use this. I'll show you what it looks like. So you are able to just place around um, what your customer delighters are, what the must be's, uh, then one dimension, what, what is it really? So you, you put it on this, um, so you have this graph as a template, I can share this, and you just put the things around it. So I, I think I did a small case study that we can look at. Um, so um, I used the bank case study. Um, okay, so this is one area I really don't like. I don't like staying on the queue for so long. So keeping customers on the queue, being cautious, um, res um, resolving their complaints on time, going the extra mile to help customers, sharing existing offers with them, um, getting it right first time and waiving minor penalties. So which of these are the must be's? Which of these are the delighters? Which of these are one dimensional? So if you look at it, customers don't want to be on queue. So it's a must be. Um, customers want you to be cautious. Um, Customers want quick resolutions. Uh, customers, um, um, a delighter would be going the extra mile to solve the problem, even if the customer is at fault. Um, also, like sharing things that they would need. Um, it's, it's also one dimension I'll do. They want it right first time. Um, they want you to waive penalties for them. Oh, they made a mistake, but yes, just give them the, um, for example, your warranty is already due by one, one year but uh, this is 1.6, 1.6, and you want, you still want that warranty to happen. So it's a delight for the customer if you can give him that. So you just place all of those things on your Kano tool, and you put it on your presentation. It just, um, it, it makes the team, uh, you need to be very visual. So it helps who is going through your project understand what you are, what you are doing. So you put them on each face, what your delight is, what's the, um, the must be's and, and just basically that, that's how the Kano analysis um, works. Then we also have um, the critical to quality. So same, like just like the, the Kano analysis, you are trying to <laughs> you take your customer needs and requirements and um, to the uh, measurable character, uh, characteristics for both your product and your service. So the, the critical um, to quality tree has the need, the driver and the requirements. Um, so how do you bring all of this um, to, to solve a problem? So you can also do this from your brainstorming section. You pick out all the things you have in your brainstorming section that you did earlier. Um, 
um, for the affinity diagram, you, and you, you could choose that you want to use a critical to quality tree approach to solve it. So you just pick all of those things. What's my need? Uh, so I, I just did a small case study. I just brought this out from my head. Like, oh, I want to create a website for these webinars that we do. And um, <clears throat> sorry, what would be my driver? My driver would be timely information on that website, in-depth articles, um, critical reviews. These are the kind of things I want to be there. But what's the requirement itself? Like I said, is, it, um, is, is that they have the right topics that, yes, we are talking about Six Sigma, but we want to see the right topics about Six Sigma there. We want to see um, articles from the right, from experts. Um, so today we're doing a training and I say, oh, let's bring in an expert, let's bring in Shinedu. So those are the requirements. It's not just um, doing it, but you want to understand what are the need, what's the need, what's the driver, and what's the requirement from the customers. This is how you create it, you, you define your face. If you don't understand this, it will be very difficult for you to develop a project charter because these are the topics, this is what you would help you create uh, uh, a very um, powerful project charter. Um, Chinedu will take us through that, I think. Okay, good, no need to go there. So I think I stopped sharing. You can take us through that part. No, you're on mute, Chinedu. Okay, no, uh, my host now, okay? Yes. Great. So let me. Okay. Okay. So, um, to share this. Okay, so uh, defined phase. Need to toggle this view. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, thank you everyone for the second part of this defined phase. Um, the defined phase is a critical part of um, the process here. It's 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 the first phase in the in the you know in the in the DMIC methodology, right? It's used to accomplish to identify the improvement project that is valuable enough to commit time, money, and resources to accomplish. Typically, once the phase is is completed, um, we've established the value. The project is defined and then resources can be allocated. Um, it comprises three main areas, right? The project scope, metrics, and problem statement, right? The project scope, which uh, we can also like call the project charter, right? You know, comes, um, comes um, you know, with like a Pareto. The, the project scope actually is like an introduction in what what's 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 um what's the size of the pie right what why why do we go why are we doing this right um the metrics kind of tells us okay yes we are doing this but what are the what are the issues where is it going to affect is it going to affect cycle time is it going to affect cost is it going to affect quality then the problem statement you know would have to include that okay you can you can combine the project scope and problem statement to get an output charter right but the the, the output of this defined phase is a clear charter that would show yes this is what we want to go for this is what the benefit is and um, you know this is what it will take again it's also going to have like these are the team members this is where you know this is this is the place on the bottom line that is going to affect right which is you know something that um, you know martin mentioned as well like you know get that result that will affect bottom line, right? Good. So um, so some of the tools that we use in the defined phase are like the Pareto charts, um, top level process map, in scope and out of scope to primary and consequential match metrics, and then goal setting in terms of um, smart goal. Um, there's some background noise coming in from me, so I'll just want to shut um, something. Can you just give me one, um, 10 seconds? All right, um, sorry, I'm back. Um, actually, 
with with Zoom and all, right? And with working from home and, and different kind of thing, right? You could have kids. So my my I had my um our newborn um doing what she does best. <laughs> all right, so um so the objective and questions, right, that this begs to ask is, you know, the Pareto chart, it shows us the scope top level process map you know what's the business problem what do we what what are the effective goals we want to set you know what's the as is project and process and what are the the metrics um this is like a pareto um we talked about this last time so i won't really dig into this but this shows that um document complaints in the second quarter is largely driven by quality and certificate error right that's what we want to go to um so again there's also process map, one of the tools. We are deep diving into tools now, right? So for instance, let's say it's a manufacturing you know, process, right? Or you, you want to produce. First, you receive an order, okay? Then you check, right, in a company. Okay, now this order from this customer that we have, what's their, what's their um, credit status? Do they have money, you know? Yeah, they have money, all right. Then we now check, do we have an inventory? Yes, we have this product, right? Or if we don't have this inventory, okay, then let's produce. This is the ETA. This is when we're gonna ship. This is when they're gonna receive it. We advise them, right? Then we produce, we ship, then we build them, right? So that's the process. So process map just shows um, the key processes, usually around eight, not more than eight in, in most instances. Project scope and tools, right? That's uh, project scope tools. One of them is SIPOC, S-I-P-O-C. It's, it's just an acronym for supplier, impute, process, output, and customers. It's used with the top process, top level process map. What it does is, in a layman's uh, shell, in a, lay, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, is to identify the process activities that are key, the inputs and the outputs, customer and stakeholders. For instance, so the process here is, um, we received a complaint from the field. Oh, that products are tearing the market, right? So first, we first confirm the problem. That's the, in terms of processes, right? What are the containment actions, root cause investigation, corrective action plan, verification and closure? So, you know, who are the suppliers, right? This product, customer service, the producing plant, distribution center, regional suppliers. What are the inputs, right? We have our corrective action form or product report form, um, QC records, supplier records. Then what are the outputs? We need to have a containment plan. There will be a rework of the stock we have in-house. We have to close the corrective action form design the process changes to ensure that it doesn't happen again, right? Um, the customers are affected customers, customer service, it could be key distributors, sales managers. So it just in a nutshell shows that this is what is the, um, you know, CPOC. Procedure, how do we do this? We need to brainstorm specific um, items, you know, to say what is in scope, what is out of scope? Because the, the problem about scope is if you don't have a clear scope statement, if you don't have something that's in scope, then you're going to do anything, right? If, if the scope is not clear, then you, you, could, you could put yourself in a rabbit hole or a bottomless pit where you keep going down and down and down, right? So um, this tool is very important and it's usually done as a team right team members will brainstorm what are the items to include or not include in the project scope write it on a sticky note put it on the board discuss each of the item and then you know take some in scope some out of scope right um then the result is added in the project charter which i'll um, talk about later um then primary metrics what do we want to solve how does it impact the bottom line right how how what's the critical success factor that we want to see that's what we call the process metric. Um, so, you know, they are almost always direct output of a process. You know, it's a measure of an outcome, but not a financial goal or a business objective. That's the primary metric. It's focused on things like quality, cycle time, cost, you know, customer satisfaction and all, derived from project stakeholders, including internal customers, external customers, and suppliers. And that's why we have the CPOC to say who's going to be affected. What do we, you know, what are their, um, what, what do they want to see? Consequential metrics are secondary metrics. It could be either process or business metrics. I'll say, for instance, you improve the life of um, you, you stop customer, you know, complaints, right? A consequential metrics could be something like, um, you know, um, um, rework, right? So you stop customer complaint, you're going to, you stop the, the key stuff is customer not complaining, right? Which would be the primary complaint. Um, they're not having bad product, but there's also a consequential one, right? Your rework, 
you're going to some sort of rework those products. It's going to affect the morale of your operators and all that kind of thing, or the morale of the people who are going to redo the work again, right? It could it could be in a service industry or or elsewhere. So, consequential question. Uh, metrics begs that question are there any other things that can be impacted as a result of this project right and that's why you see a tape measure here we got to measure and say if we measure this if we fix this what is it going to affect now just a little test of knowledge right um i've even given some of the uh some of the expo what could be a primary metrics as well as a consequential metrics from this product complaints right you can type in the text box so Let's say people are complaining. So you're receiving the, a lot of complaints. We want to reduce the number of complaints. What's a primary metric there? Or we can even you can even unmute yourself and just and just talk, right? If you if if it's gonna be faster that way. Primary metric, anyone? Uh anyone? Affected customers. Exactly. So, um, primary metric affected customers. Um, that could be one of the that that could be one of the impacts. Uh, but yeah, not not really a primary metric, but one of the impacts, right? Uh, internal customers metric. What? Yeah, internal customer is one of them that you want to measure something about the customer. What? What is it? We are receiving complaints, right? So, what do we want to stop? What do we want to stop? So that's what you ask yourself in terms of metric. Anybody? Anything? Re reject reduction. Yeah, reject reduction could be one of the metrics. Um, complaints reduction could be one of the metrics, right? So that's that's primary and consequential metrics in this in this regard. So you need to know what is it you're trying to solve. What is that that, that problem? Yeah. All right. So um, so the next is um problem statement tools, right? So if you want to state a problem statement, so if you say there are too many customer returns, is it is it a, a, a very good problem statement? Obviously not, you see it in red, right? But a better problem statement would be, in 2005, the big ticket return rate was 17%, representing $15 million in return. This was 7% higher than the target objective or goal for the division. This is good because you've got a problem, you've got very clear objective, you know, it's very much objective and you can know what to target. There was 60 minutes of downtime. You see, it's it's not a very good problem statement if you look at it, right? But some people will say, yes, that's the problem. There was 60 minutes of downtime. But again, you need to ask what? What was it? Where, where, where did the downtime occur, right? You don't know where it occurred, you don't know how you know how it occurred, you don't know, you know, who it affects, you know, that kind of thing. But if you say there was 60 minutes of paper jam downtime on line one, unit B on first shift, September 27, 2017. This has asked, this has answered, you know, what what is the problem? Where is the problem? How does the problem occur, right? Um, where is it where who's seen the problem? What shift is experiencing the problem and when? You know, so it can actually help you in in, in solving the problem. So, um, um, so I'd like to ask us the question. Uh, we've got one minute. Um, I think we need to relog in for the for the final part. I just have a couple more slides, uh, maybe five five more. Um, but you know, I'd like to also ask questions and get our questions for it to be interactive, right? Um, so we can see something dripping, right? What what what's the problem statement in this situation? Who can give it a shot? You can unmute yourself and and give a problem statement. A leaking tap. A leaking tap. Okay, great. Martin says a leaking tap. Okay, who else? Bad valve bad valve from Lewis. Okay, great. Um, we have less than one minute, so it's going to cut off any moment, then we'll come back and then I'll hear some of our thoughts on the problem statement. Okay. Okay. In, okay. Yeah, someone in the chat says, leaking tap, two leaking tap, tap. Uh, loss. <laughs> okay. We are having water wastage at the tap by two drops in five seconds. Mm, Joseph Jacob, that's 